Hello, I'm Luga Torix, and today I'm going to be discussing which is the best African faction in Rome Total War. I've done videos comparing the Roman factions, the Hellenic factions, the Middle Eastern factions, and now finally we're getting on to the African factions, and of course the Barbarian factions, how could I forget about them? Now this is a slightly odd video really, because actually there are only kind of two true African factions, um, that's the Carthaginians and the Numidians. That's the only two factions we've got to compare today. I know I could have lumped the Egyptians in, but I explained in the previous video why I actually put the Egyptians in with the Eastern uh, factions, even though the Egyptians are actually their own culture, so it's kind of weird. But I will, at the end, kind of compare Egypt um, to these factions, because I do think it's kind of fair. But basically, I am just comparing two factions today. It's kind of odd how this has gone out, but it's okay. And you probably already know the answer to this question, which is the best African faction, Carthage or Numidia. I think pretty much everyone is going to say Carthage, so I'm not going to leave it as some sort of big surprise at the end. I'm going to, you know, pick Carthage and you're going to all pretend to be surprised. We're going to be discussing this from two perspectives. The perspective of the actual army composition, and we're going to be comparing and contrasting the two factions, and also their position on the campaign map. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it, and first of all, look at the two respective armies. So it's no great surprise that the Numidian army comes in second place here. And actually, although a lot of people hate on the Numidian army, and they really aren't that good, I will admit, actually the Numidian army isn't quite as bad as everyone makes them out to be. I think they're not, it's not a terrible, terrible army, but it is lacking in some respects. Let's talk about the infantry first. Well, actually, if you talk about the whole army, actually, to start off with, you can see there isn't a huge amount of choice. There aren't that many different amount of units, and, you know, if you compare them to the Romans, for example, the Romans have, like, double the amount of units that the Numidians do. We don't have a huge amount of options, and this is the kind of campaign where it can get a little bit boring because you're going to be spamming the same units over and over again. But, yeah, let's discuss the infantry, and as you can see, not a huge amount of choice. We've got three options, in fact, in terms of frontline infantry. We've got the peasants, which are the same for every faction, straight garbage. So the main... A piece of infantry is actually going to be the desert infantry, but I think the desert infantry are actually pretty decent The Numidian infantry certainly isn't too bad particularly as you upgrade You know you're gonna have to upgrade a bit to get to the legionaries which we'll discuss in a second But uh, desert infantry really aren't that bad, you know seven attack 13 defense. They're a solid Defensive unit, but they actually have got a charge bonus of three so they can be kind of offensive as well Good morale good stamina bonus fighting cavalry because they're spearmen Really not a terrible unit. Are they a world-beating unit? Are they the best unit of spearmen in the whole world? No, but actually they will do a solid job even on the harder difficulties. Any unit that's got good morale will do a solid job in my opinion. So actually really not terrible. And if you compare them to, for example, the Parthians, this is better than any Parthian infantry you're going to see. The desert, the desert infantry really aren't too bad at all. If you upgrade, you know, a little bit up the tech system, you're going to get to Numidian legionaries, and I like legionary troops because they're actually quite diverse. You know, they can sit back and defend if you want because they've got good defensive statistics. Defense 16, it's a shame they haven't got good morale, but they are well armoured. They're going to be, uh, you know, good at uh, defending against missiles or whatever. And talking of missiles, they've got a missile attack as well, so they've got a bit of range to them. A little bit like the Roman legionaries that, you know, you would see if you've played as Rome before, most likely. So they've got a bit of a sort of range attack as well, and they're decent in the melee attack as well. Quite a versatile unit, really not terrible. So the Numidian infantry certainly isn't too bad. The problem is there isn't a lot of it, there isn't a lot of choice, and it makes for a sometimes quite boring campaign. Let's get on to the cavalry. Now the cavalry again is a little bit disappointing. Um, long shield cavalry is actually pretty decent. Don't even get me started on camels. If you want to see uh, a long diatribe of, of camels, I did a rant about that in uh, one of the mercenary videos where I talked about the Middle Eastern mercenaries and I discussed, I, 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 I discussed my hatred and disgust for camels um, as just useless creatures. Um, they do have good morale, so I guess that's okay, but I just don't like camels, okay? Don't get me started. I don't like camels. they got General's Bodyguard and all that. I mean, this cavalry is okay, but you know, there's no um, there's no amazing heavy cavalry or anything like that. It's not like they have cataphracts or anything. This is light cavalry. There's decent stats, but nothing amazing. The general's bodyguard is just general's bodyguard. Nothing again. It's like okay, competent, but not world beating. There's nothing elite here so far. 
And then we get onto the Numidian uh, Cavalry. This is a unit you're probably going to be using quite a lot in the early game. Uh, in fact, if you see some playthroughs of Numidian, most playthroughs on YouTube, I think people just spam Numidian Cavalry for most of the early game in particular, and even the late game, quite honestly. And that's because really Cavalry is king in Rome Total War. And not only that, but Missile Cavalry is like completely overpowered. Missile Cavalry is great because they just can completely tire out the opposition. They can attack you for days, but actually the opposition can't get anywhere near you because you're just far too fast moving. And, you know, that's what makes Horse Archers, for example, so good. That's what makes a Scythia campaign or an Armenia or a Parthia campaign so overpowered because you can just spam Horse Archers all day. That's great, but the problem is these guys aren't quite as good as Horse Archers. Their range isn't quite as good. Their missile attack is okay, but you know the javelins just won't. The javelins just aren't as effective as archers, in my opinion. Sure, they do have um, mercenary war elephants, so sometimes you can recruit mercenary uh, elephants if you're in the right region. But um, you know, very rare, and I've discussed them before in the mercenary video. So to summarise, the Numidian army is not irredeemably terrible. I don't even know if it's the worst army in the game. It might be, but. It's not terrible. There are no abysmal units. There are some abysmal units in this game. Eastern Infantry is an example of an abysmal, useless unit. Numidians have got nothing that bad. The problem is, they've got nothing elite as well. For me, the Numidians are okay in the early game, but as other factions tech up and get better, you're going to fall behind very, very quickly, and it's going to become more and more apparent as the game goes along that actually you're having a pretty tough time. Let's move over to Carthage now. Now, honestly, Carthage isn't my favourite army in the whole game, and mostly that's because of the missile attack is kind of missing, but still, it definitely is um, a better faction than Numidia in terms of their unit roster. And you can see that pretty much immediately because there's just a whole lot more choice um, to the Carthaginian army, and that's particularly prevalent in terms of the infantry. Now, in the early game, the infantry is pretty substandard, really. Um, town militia is pretty bad, and the town militia is worse than anything the Numidians can recruit. You know, it's another example of a... Of a under par unit but you know and the Iberian infantry really not that amazing either but the difference is with Carthage is they can tech up and they can get proper spearmen these are well armoured spearmen pretty decent then you get up to even better that can form a phalanx and have good morale and then you get up to even even better sacred band a really solid unit of spearmen not the best in the whole game I mean I wouldn't put them up there with Spartans or whatever but really I would say a high tier unit of spearmen and that's the difference between Carthage and Numidia, is that they can just upgrade more. Now, I will admit the Numidians have slightly more diversity. I love the Legionaries. The Legionaries are great, and the Carthaginians, it's a shame they don't have anything like that. If you look at all these units, with the exception of maybe the Iberian Infantry, they're quite defensive. Spearmen, 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 spearmen. Good against cavalry. Good at just standing there and taking a hit for days, but the problem is... They're not particularly manoeuvrable, they're not going to charge forward, so a little bit lacking in diversity, but still, the quality of these guys are just better than any spearmen the Numidians can have, and I would put the infantry over the Numidians for sure. So, yeah, just the, the great diversity is better. Actually, in terms of missile infantry, they're actually inferior to Numidia. They've got the same skirmishers and slingers, great, but they haven't even got proper archers, which bemuses me that the Carthaginians don't have proper archers. The cavalry, if we move on to the cavalry, they've got a, a, a wider variety of the Numidians. They've got the round shield cavalry, that's pretty standard unit of light infantry. Long shield cavalry, good morale, solid unit again. Sacred band, again, you know, the upgrades is getting better and better where you're getting to this sort of elite, kind of more elite level of cavalry that just isn't seen amongst the Numidians. They also have a greater access to elephants. I think the Numidians can only access to elephants via mercenaries. The Carthaginians can actually recruit them. Elephants are pretty cool situationally and are, again, are a better unit of cavalry that the Numidians can produce. I would actually say that the difference between the Numidian and Carthaginian army actually isn't as big as what some people would think. But still, in late game, the difference starts to get bigger and bigger and for me the Carthaginian army is better throughout the whole game rather than just the beginning being a solid army. In the later game they can keep up with the elite armies of the Egyptians and the Romans whereas the Numidians can't really comparatively. So anyway I've discussed the army composition. To summarise quite simply Numidian second, Carthage first. If I was to lump in the Egyptians in with these two 
I would put the Egyptians first above both of them, and I discuss the Egyptian army in more detail in the Which is the Best Eastern Factions. So if you want to go and see that, that's where I talk about Egypt. But Egypt have um, a, a diverse army like Carthage, even more diverse. They have much better missile troops. We discussed the Pharaoh's Bowmen earlier. Good cavalry, really good cavalry, in fact. They just have a bit of everything, a very, very strong army. The Egyptians is one of the strongest in the whole game. So if you include the Egyptians in the quote-unquote African factions, then actually the Egyptians would be stronger than both of these factions. But yeah, second place Numidia, first place Carthage yeah, in this respect. Okay, so we're going to get on to the campaign position now, and unsurprisingly, the Numidians also come in second place. Now actually, once again, this isn't actually as terrible a starting position comparatively to Carthage than maybe you would think. I definitely think Carthage does have the better starting position and there's several reasons for that but it's not a huge huge difference in my opinion. Numidia start off in actually I'm <laughs> looking at the starting position for Numidia again actually it is pretty bad. Um, Numidia starts off sprawled across North Africa particularly this kind of region what is this like Morocco probably uh, I think I don't know I think it's kind of like the sort of Morocco region. Um, they have actually quite a few settlements. They start off with four. Tingi up here, Dimidi, um, Kirta, and they also have access to Nept is Rebel, but the AI always goes for Nept really early on. It's rubbish, don't even, it's not worth bothering, but okay, maybe. And they also have a settlement over here, Siwa, which is right next to the Egyptians. Well, let's talk, let's talk about Siwa first, actually. It, it's kind of good and bad being next to Egypt. I don't hate Siwa being here. In my experience, the Egyptians tend to go up in the Middle East. They're much more interested in taking Petra and Bostra early on and then eventually fighting the Seleucids and sort of trying to get up here. Generally, they're less interested in Siwa, but potentially they still could go for you. The AI can sometimes be quite unpredictable, particularly on very hard. So don't think that Siwa is just guaranteed to be safe, but... In general, I actually quite like the fact that Numidia have Siwa, and we'll discuss in terms of tactics in a minute why I think this settlement is quite important. But the main couple of reasons why the Numidian starting position is trash so much, the main reason is the economy. The Numidian economy is garbage. Considering you start off with four settlements, 3,000 denarii is not a huge amount to actually start off with, and I'm pretty sure they're losing money. Yeah, they're losing basically 300 a turn. So... You're losing money, you haven't got a lot of money to start off with, the economy's garbage. Yeah, you're bordering the Mediterranean, but you've got zero ports as far as I'm aware of. Yeah, zero ports, so you can't really take advantage of the fact that you are next to the Mediterranean from the get-go. That's a bit of a shame. Other factions that do have ports can. But also, you know, um, for example, particularly Dimity over here, it's just the desert. There's no resources, there's no good trade, there's no roads or networks really to trade with other factions so that's going to be a little bit more difficult as well and starting tech is pretty poor there's not a lot of farms or anything like that this desert land over here just isn't particularly profitable which i don't like and as i say the few settlements that have the potential to be profitable are actually really small rubbish settlements like kirta and tinji and they don't even have ports so you can't really take advantage of their decent positioning a little bit of a disappointment really in terms of their economy Another thing I really don't like about Numidia is it takes an age to get from one settlement to the other. None of the settlements are close to each other. Even the ones that border each other, like Kircher and, and Tinji, are so far away. I mean, how long would it take a unit of infantry to get from one to the other? Look how far. Units don't travel far in the desert. Take, what, what six? One, two, three, four, five. It would take, I think, six turns to get from one settlement to the other. So if, for example, the Carthaginians came down and attacked Tinji, good luck trying to get reinforcements over. I mean, I guess you could use a navy, but considering you don't even start off with any boats, that's kind of unlikely that you're going to in the early game. It's just not very practical. It's even more difficult trying to get troops over to Dimity. That takes an absolute age as well. That's a solid six turns as well. You know, it's, it's pretty rough getting from one faction to another and if you want to go down and take Nept for example it, it takes a solid four or five turns just to get there never mind taking it. C was also vulnerable in this respect because again if the Egyptians do attack there's no way no way you're going to get from the Numidian homeland to C waiting time no way and also the bad thing about having a fragmented empire and having a random faction over here is that the capital 
the capital's positioning take is a, makes a huge bearing on public order. And if one fact, if one town is so far away from the capital, it means they're not going to get that public order bonus. If you have a faction that all of the towns are pretty consolidated near each other, then they can all take advantage of the fact the capital is nearby. Siwa doesn't have that luxury. Now let's talk about uh, the actual factions that you're, you're nearby to. The Numidians aren't actually too vulnerable. The Carthaginians won't be too much of a threat because they don't even have any boats to get over to Africa anyway. The same goes for the Spanish. So in the early game, actually quite unlikely you're going to be attacked in Tingi. You're pretty safe over here. Dimidi's in the middle of nowhere. Really, the fact that nobody's going to attack you, yeah, it's a good thing, but it's also an insult because quite honestly, your settlements just aren't worth taking. I know if I'm, for example, playing as a Scipii, I would always go for Carthage and then probably head along this direction first before bothering to take out the Numidians. It's quite simply just not worth it. And the AI kind of has that attitude as well. So you're not going to be attacked from the south because there are no factions beyond here. Up here, no faction is going to be able to reach you in the early game. And over here, well, Carthage is a bit of a buffer um, between the Romans and you. And also the Carthaginians are going to be so bothered dealing with the Romans that it's unlikely that they're going to particularly focus on you. Now, that's actually not a terrible thing because it means that you can take Carthage and Thapsus with relative ease if you're the Numidians. This is a positive of their starting position, is the fact that the Romans can be a big distraction. Most likely the Scipii are going to be going for Lilibium at some point. They're pretty much programmed to go for Syracuse first and then Lilibium. And the Carthaginians are going to pour all their force into Sicily to try and get there, leaving Carthage and Thapsus pretty vulnerable, meaning you can sneak around the back and take them. Then you've got some more profitable settlements with ports on the Mediterranean and you can get going. My main piece of advice of New Media is getting Carthage as quickly as possible um, because that's when the campaign really starts, in my opinion. Actually, New Media isn't too horrible starting position. They've got some very strong upsides, but a lot, a lot of very bad downsides to their arm, uh, their starting position, which is a little bit worrying. Uh, but let's move on to the number one faction, which of course is Carthage. Okay, so at number one, the best African starting position is indeed the Carthaginians. And it's better than the Numidians for several reasons. Let's talk about the economy first. I think the Carthaginians might be the richest faction at the beginning of the game. I think I can probably verify that, right? By looking at the, um, the financials. So financial ranking, Oh, it doesn't say on the first turn. You know what, let me let me skip a turn. I want to see who's the richest faction. I'm pretty sure it's Carthage. 7,000 denarii is a huge amount. And 7,000 denarii, sure they've got quite a few settlements. But actually, oh, let's t turn off the fog of war. This is going to take forever. Um, yeah, actually 7,000 denarii is quite a lot. That's more than double of what the Numidians have. Sure, they've got more settlements, but only one more settlement than the Numidians have. And also, by the way, I did absolutely nothing and made money. Because again, we're going to discuss in a second, their, their economic starting position is a lot better. So the economy is instantly a lot better than the, the Numidians. And uh, that is certainly an advantage. So let's have a look at the uh, financial ranking. Top five factions. So it reckons the Seleucids and the Egyptians are richer, but that's it. So I think we're about third um, in terms of the rankings. So we're one of the richest factions, certainly richer than Numidia. There's no doubt about that at all. So why is Carthage so rich? Well, yeah, like I said, they start off with 7,000 denarii. That's great. Not only is that a lot of money to start off the game with, but also it's money that you can pump into the economy to make even more money. Great. But also all their settlements are on the uh, Mediterranean coast. Carthage has a port, which again, the Numidians don't. They also have access to quite a few resources along here. Thapsus, access to the Mediterranean, Libyan, Carolis, Parma, and Cordoba. It means that actually there's a huge amount of potential if you get all these settlements ports for a lot of sea trade and you can be making money quickly, but also just generally better resources. This region isn't in the middle of nowhere in the desert. Actually, there's some good resources around here, which is good. So the economy is certainly a lot better, uh, which is awesome. And the thing I don't particularly like about the Carthaginian Empire is that it's arguably the most fragmented in the whole game, certainly up there with the likes of the Greek cities, for example. Their settlements over here... Um, in I think they're they're on f what five separate land masses? They're on they're, they're, their settlements are on five separate land masses. They've got the land mass of Africa, the actual main continent. They've got a settlement on Sicily. They've got a settlement on what is now Sardinia now. Settlement on Parma and a settlement in Iberia. Five different land masses. That's that's actually um, uh, quite phenomenal. And 
Again, as I said earlier, that makes it tough moving armies from one area to another. If, for example, Cordoba gets attacked by several strong Spanish armies, good luck trying to get reinforcements in time, you're not going to. So that's a little bit tough, I would say. Um, but also, if you're an experienced player, it means that actually you can attack from several regions early off and take a large portion of the map. So I think it kind of benefits you if you're experienced. If you're a beginner, it's going to be a little bit, little bit more tough. Now, let's talk about the Romans real quick, because they're the biggest threat to you, really. The Numidians aren't a huge amount of threat if the AI is playing as them, so I wouldn't worry about them too much. The Spanish uh, maybe might be a threat, but I'm not too scared by the Spanish. And that's really it. It's those two and the Romans. Again, if I was going to lump in the Egyptians with these African uh, factions, I would say the Egyptians have an even stronger starting position. In fact, I think I said in my Eastern um, video where I was comparing the factions that the Egyptians have the strongest starting position in the game. I should have said that because um, they do, in my opinion. I think the, this is the strongest starting position. A fantastic economy, really fantastic economy. Two wonders of the world starting off with potential to expand into rebel territory. That's another disadvantage with the Carthaginians. Sure, Lepkis Magna is a nice free faction, but they haven't got many like free settlements right next door. The Egyptians have a ton of free settlements. They can just take Bostra and Petra early on, easy peasy. Like that, Palmyra is just for, for taking, that's easy. And they, they're next to one of the most vulnerable factions in the whole game, the Seleucids. So the Egyptians have an amazing starting position, so that's pretty obvious. So if I was going to rank the factions, um, well, let's talk about the two that we've specifically focused on. At second place, I would put Numidia. They are arguably the weakest faction in the whole game. And then in first place, I would put the Carthaginians. But if you were going to include the Egyptians as well, I would put the Egyptians above both of them. Pretty obvious, really. I know this video was a little bit obvious and, you know, probably didn't surprise anyone and it was kind of odd just comparing two factions but these were the only two factions remaining I didn't want to go through all the factions and just leave these two out and it is still interesting to compare them I think so hopefully this was a decent video but yeah I'll be back with more videos very very soon thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around